In this video, I'm gonna give five tips for electricians when carrying out maximum demand calculations. So the first tip that I'm gonna give you is, if possible, use the design current rather than the rating of the protective device. So if you know the load on the circuit in watts, you can calculate the design current, and this will allow you to use the design current in the calculation, which will be less than the rating of the protective device. And this can make a big difference in your maximum demand calculation. So even on lighting circuits, this can make a big difference. So for example, if you've got three six amp lighting circuits and you calculate the actual load in watts for each of the lighting circuits, it's likely to be much less than six amps or 10 amps. So if you use this, it's gonna make a big difference in your calculation and there's still diversity to apply to this. So that's my first tip is to use the design current where possible. Now, obviously for some circuits like socket outlet circuits, you're unlikely to know what the design current is. So in those situations, it's best to use the rating of the protective device. But using design current is a really good tip that can help you keep that maximum demand as low as possible. Now the second tip that I'm gonna give you is when it comes to power circuits, don't just include ring socket circuits or radial socket circuits, also include other types of power circuits. So for example, you could include um, radial circuits for kitchen appliances or radial circuits for hand dryers. Those are all examples of power circuits that you could include when you're calculating the diversity for power circuits. So when you're working out the diversity factor for those types of circuits, you'll have typically 100% of the largest load and then 50% of the remaining, obviously that differs depending on what type of installation it is. But what you can do is you can batch those types of circuits together so you've got 100% of the largest and then 50% of the remaining. And what that does is that prevents you from having to do that equation more than once. So you would have the largest circuit maybe, for example, the kitchen ring socket circuit. And then the remaining circuits would be the other power circuits. So you could have um, ring socket circuits, radial socket circuits, kitchen appliances, um, and maybe hand dryers or something else. So by having all of those as power circuits, that means that you don't have to do that equation twice. So it means that you've only got 100% of the largest power circuit and you don't have other types of power circuits being at 100% as well. So that's another tip for how you might be able to reduce your maximum demand calculations and keep them as low as possible. Now there is a caveat to this, and that is that there are separate diversity factors for things like cooking appliances, and there are some types of appliance where no diversity is allowable at all, such as motors, for example, and water heaters that are thermostatically controlled. So it's really important to check out the on-site guide to look at the individual diversity factors. The third tip that I'm gonna give you regarding maximum demand is that consumer units have maximum demand ratings as well. So if you look in the on-site guide and you look at the table that gives you the values for allowable diversity for different types the circuit. If you look at the bottom of the table, you'll see a note that relates to the rating of consumer units and that it's important not to exceed the rating of the consumer unit. You'll also see this in uh, manufacturer's instructions and usually they're rated at about 100 amps but obviously larger for distribution boards and so on. So it's really important to bear this in mind that consumer units have a maximum demand value as well and it's important not to exceed this. And this is important to bear in mind if you're doing maximum demand calculations and you've got things like renewable installations, maybe you've got electric vehicle charging points, it might be possible to exceed the rating of the consumer unit. So it's really important to bear this in mind. Now, when we do a domestic installation, I think that we all like to see one consumer unit to keep it nice and neat and tidy. But bear in mind, Nowadays, if you've got those additional renewable loads or EV chargers, for example, it might be necessary to have more than one consumer unit. So that's an important thing to bear in mind is the rating of the consumer unit, which you'll find in the manufacturer's instructions. Now, the fourth tip that I'm gonna give you today is to bear in mind that there's more than one method of calculating maximum demand and diversity. There are two methods in the on-site guide alone. Now, the first method is the individual diversity factors for each type of circuit, but there's also an additional method, which is for circuits that are installed in accordance with Appendix H in the on-site guide, and that is to use 100% of the largest load and 40% of the remaining loads. And I think this is number 10 on the schedule in the on-site guide. In addition to that, there are other methods of calculating maximum demand. Now, DNOs use a completely different method of calculating maximum demand. So you may have noticed that DNOs calculate the maximum demand quite a lot lower than how it would work out if you use the on-site guide, because basically they're looking at the load overall on their network and they apply diversity to that. Now, in the other videos on my channel where I talk about maximum demand, I mainly use the methods in the on-site guide. But one thing that's important to bear in mind is that new technologies such as electric vehicles and renewable technologies aren't yet included in the on-site guide. So it's important to bear those in mind as well. 
And so that brings me to the fifth tip that I'm gonna give you today. And that is that when you're calculating maximum demand, to do so at the very beginning of the project. Because if there's a problem with the maximum demand, that's gonna give you sufficient time to be able to contact the DNO if you need to order a new or an additional supplier, for example. And I think that that is a really good thing to bear in mind that when you're starting a project, that you look at the maximum demand at the very start of the project. And also, keep an eye on it over the course of the project as well. I think we've all probably worked on projects where additional loads have been added throughout the life of the project because the client's changed their mind or you know things have changed over the course of the project. I talk about calculating maximum demand in more detail in some other videos on my channel and I'll put a link at the top of the screen. And if you haven't done so already, please click over here to subscribe to my channel.